Hello, San Ramon art students. So today, I was th I've been thinking a lot about the garden because I just planted my vegetable garden. So I've been thinking about the, the vegetables that grow on top of the ground and the vegetables that grow underneath the ground. So the picture I drew, I drew a line, and that's supposed to be, this is supposed to be underground and this is supposed to be above the ground. So I drew a carrot. This is supposed to be a beet. This is a tomato plant. Tomatoes grow, the fruit grows above the ground. And for beets, they grow below the ground. You have to dig them up to get to the part you eat. The carrots, the same thing. You have to dig it up. It's a, it's a, um, it's a root vegetable. That's what that's called because the, the part that you eat is the actual root part. There are some little roots that come off the very bottom, but the, the main part you eat is considered the root. You've got lettuce here. These are radishes. They also grow underground, their roots. And these are potatoes. And potatoes are really fun. I think you guys, um, I think you probably all got to pick them in the pumpkin patch. And you get to dig them up. And do you remember doing that? And so the, the, green, the leaves grow up high, but the potatoes are underground. And then I also put a couple little worms underground because worms like to live underground. You could put like a hedgehog or a mole or... Um, a groundhog underground because they live underground too, right? So you could draw those kind of things underground. And then on my shop here, I've put a butterfly and I put the sun and I put the blue sky. Okay. So you're going to do the same thing. So all you're going to do when you do your picture is <clears throat> put this down here. Uh, so you're going to draw a line to show the difference between the underground and the above the ground. So you could draw a line with a pencil or a marker. I, I, for mine, I used markers and crayons. You use whatever you want. There's my line. And then, <clears throat> and then you're going to start thinking about what grows. Um, you think about, you could think about, I did carrots, so I might draw a carrot and get orange. You could draw a carrot and carrots are usually kind of wide at the top and then they get more narrow as they go down. Okay. And then I do the little skinny roots because they do have little skinny roots that come out the bottom. And then on the top of a carrot, it's there's like green leaves and stuff on the top. So you could draw some green leaves that come up. And that's how you know where the carrot is when you go to pull it, you know <clears throat> where it's actually growing. Um, what else could you do? I showed you potatoes and beets and radishes. You could do... Um, you could do eggplant. Eggplant grows above the ground. So you would have, and it has these sort of big leaves that come up. And then the purple, it's usually purple eggplant is. Oops, I have a mess over here. Yeah, it comes out like this. You can color it in with your marker. You could use a crayon, whatever you want. Um, there's another eggplant there. Um, I showed you tomatoes on the other one. You could do you could do squash. You could do zucchini or uh, pumpkins. Oh, pumpkins would be fun. Pumpkins have these big leaves, big giant leaves, and then it's being sort of abstract here. And then they have these big, beautiful yellowy orange flowers that come out, and that's what actually forms the pumpkin. So you'll see these big flowers and when you see these you know ooh, it's about to start. So that's a big, that's going to turn into a pumpkin. Let's pretend maybe <clears throat> there's already a pumpkin growing on this plant. You could draw a big pumpkin in the background here. The leaf could be covering it, but you could just see the orange in the background. Of course they're not going to be orange yet. Do you, know, do you know what they start as? They start green when they start and then they become orange as the season goes on. So they wouldn't be orange in this time of the year, but they would get there pretty soon. And then what I did was when I colored it in, I used the marker for the outline and then I colored in with crayon. So if you have both, you can totally do that. It's kind of a fun technique. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, it's up to you. So anyway, you'll color in the whole thing. You can think about what little animals might live underground. As you remember, I did worms for mine. Um, but maybe you want to think about something else that might be under there. I'm going to give him a little smiley face. You can think about that book, Diary of the Worm. You remember that book? It's a fun one. You could, you could, you'd make like 
little tunnels that the worm is living in you could show like he has this whole little underground life right with his worm friends maybe that's their little burrow you could have a very fun time with this think about all the stuff that might be underground all the vegetables that are underground and the vegetables that are above ground you can color your sky blue you can put a sun in there um, and if you're not sure how a vegetable grows ask your parents or, or your brother or sister at home and say how does that grow and that that's kind of a fun way to learn something new isn't it another thing you can do to add to your picture which would be kind of nice would be a lot of gardeners will put like a stick in their ground by the the food and they'll do something like this all right i'm going to turn it on the side so it's easier to write they'll write like carrots and you could write the words of all the veggies next to it. And that way, people will know exactly what veggie. They won't have to say to you, what vegetable is that? They'll just know. Okay, and that's really great too because you get to practice your writing. So you get to do both. You get to practice your writing and draw a picture. Okay? So do more than just three. I'm just doing three right now. But see how many you can do. And you can even do stuff up in your sky. Like remember I did, um, I did on mine, I did, um, I had a butterfly and I had the sun. You could have a bird up there. I've had, I have a lot of quail in my yard right now. Those are those birds with the funny little thing at the top. They're so much fun to draw. So you could draw one of those in your garden. They actually do little dust baths in my garden. They like to, they kind of scurry their little body into the dirt. It's very funny. So I don't, I don't know why they do that, but they do that. So maybe you can find out about why they do that and you can let me know. Um, after you finish your picture, you can take a picture of it and send it to me or your teacher. My email is kchasman, C-H-A-S-S-M-A-N at NUSD.org. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I hope you're having a good day. And I thought this might just make you feel extra springy because it did just become spring. So happy spring, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.